For this problem, I have decided to actually include the problem in the video. That way, even if you're not necessarily looking for help with this specific problem, you can still use this video to challenge yourself if you're interested in learning about electricity and whatnot on your own. So, I encourage you to pause the video and attempt to solve this problem by yourself now that I have been kind enough to include the problem this time around. Alright, I'm assuming you've done that now. Anyways, so we're given a formula for the voltage, and it's uh, a function that varies with respect to time. And part A asks us to find the charge on the, oops, part A asks us to find the charge on the capacitor. Now before we do anything, before we even attempt to try and solve the problem, the first thing I'm going to do is take this time point, this point in time that the problem gives us, and plug it into our voltage formula, because since our voltage is given as a function of time, and we know this one time period is going to be important, uh, then it stands to reason that, that, that the voltage at that point in time may be important as well. So I'm going to take this function here, 6 plus 4t minus 2 times t squared, and then plug this value, 0 0.500 seconds, into t. And what we get as a result of that is we find that the voltage at that point in time at 0 0.500 seconds is about 7.5 volts. All right, now let's actually take a look at what, what, uh, what part A of the question asks us. And we're first asked to find the charge on the capacitor. Now keep in mind that the definition of capacitance, the definition of the capacitance on a capacitor, is that it's equal to the ratio of the charge on the capacitor to the voltage over the capacitor, the potential difference across the capacitor. Now we're looking for the charge here, so let's take this formula and algebraically solve it for the charge, or Q, which turns out to be equal to the capacitance of the capacitor times the potential difference. Now the problem gives us the capacitance as constant, it's 30 microfarads, so I'll write this as, and we want SI units, so rather than writing 30 microfarads, I'm going to expand that prefix and instead write 30 times 10 to the negative 6 farads, since that's the regular SI unit and the micro is basically equal to times 10 to the negative 6, and it's the capacitance multiplied by the voltage. Now, as I found earlier, we already found the voltage at that point in time, so it's multiplied by 7.5 volts. Now, using your calculator, we can multiply these two quantities together, and we find that the capacitance is equal to about 225 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. Only, if we want to make this a little cleaner, we can convert this times 10 to the negative 6 back into the, the micro prefix that we had above. So I'm actually going to write this as 225 microcoulombs, and that is our final answer for part A. Part B asks us to find the current into the capacitor. So, uh, recall that the definition of current is that it's equal to the rate of change of the charge with respect to time as it flows through something. Or, another way to write that is the derivative of the charge with respect to time. Now, we're not given the rate of change of the charge, but as we established earlier in part A, charge is equal to the capacitance times the voltage. So I'm going to rewrite this as the derivative of CV, or the capacitance times the voltage with respect to T. And once again, the capacitance is constant as given to us by the problem. So we can pull this C out, and it becomes the capacitance times the derivative of the voltage with respect to time. And we have the capacitance, and we are given the function for the voltage, meaning we just need to take the derivative of this voltage function that we have up here. So this is going to be equal to C times, and now I'm going to take the derivative of the voltage function with respect to time. Now, you'll need to know calculus to solve this, but, basic, but basically, this is just a simple derivative here. So I'm going to take the derivative of each individual term of this voltage function, 
So first, the derivative of 6 with respect to time. Uh, the t variable is not part of this term, so it's just the derivative of a constant, which turns out to just be 0, plus the derivative of 4 times t. Well, now we do have the t. And as per the power rule of differentiation, the t will just vanish, and this just becomes 4.00 without any special variables there. And the derivative of negative 2 times t squared. Once again, we can apply the power rule here, so we'll take this exponent and multiply it by the coefficient. So we end up with minus 4 times t, and it was squared earlier. So again, as per the power rule, the other aspect of the power rule is that the exponent is then subtracted by 1. So it's just a 1 there, which might as well just not be there at all. And so that is the derivative of the voltage function, and that is what we are including in our in our in our formula for the current. Now, if you aren't familiar with differential calculus and you're unclear on any of the steps I took to get this result, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll clarify anything you'd like. But now all that's left for us to do is to plug our values into this, uh, this formula here. So plug the capacitance in for C as we did in part A, and then plug in the 0.5 seconds part for T, and your calculator should find the current as 60.0 times 10 to the negative 6 amperes, as amperes are the units for current. Now, as per part A, I will, sim I will shorten this a bit by replacing this times 10 to the negative 6 here with the micro prefix. So this really can be written in final form as 60 microamperes. And that is our answer for part B. Finally, for part C, we're asked to find the power output from the power supply. Now, a formula worth memorizing for electricity problems is that electric power is equal to the current times the voltage, or times the potential difference, rather. Now, we already found the current. That, that's, that was the goal of part B. So we have that at our disposal now. It's just 60.0 times 10 to the negative 6 amperes. And I'm not using the micro prefix here because it needs to be in standard SI units for our result to be accurate. Multiplied by the voltage at a given time, or the potential difference at a given time, which as we established way back at the beginning of the problem, is just going to be 7.5 volts. So finally, plugging this into your calculator, and we find the power as about 4.5 times 10 to the negative 4 watts. And that is our final answer for the power coming from the power supply.